11.37 is the time. Back to Brexit. I don't know when we'll return to it, but every now and then a story pops that demands our attention, and this House of Lords defeat for the government yesterday certainly fits into that category. Lots of people very, very unhappy about Parliament having so much power and using it to enshrine the sovereignty of Parliament, in this case the House of Commons. So just to be absolutely clear, the House of Lords voted democratically last night to entrust the House of Commons, the elected chamber, with full scrutiny. In fact, it entrusted the House of Commons with the power to prevent a power grab by the Prime Minister. This is practically Magna Carta stuff. This could prove to be one of the most significant pieces of parliamentary business of the century. Genuinely. Because it prevents the Prime Minister from riding roughshod over parliamentary sovereignty. Now, what I find myself baffled by is people who claimed that they voted in the Brexit referendum because they felt too much power was in Brussels and parliamentary sovereignty has been compromised. Today, led by the front page of the Daily Mail, today they are being encouraged to be cross about the amount of power and sovereignty that Westminster clearly possesses. And I haven't really unravelled that psychodrama, for which I apologise. Jack's in Birmingham. Jack, maybe you can help. What would you like to say? How are you, how are you doing, James? Hello, right? Jack. I'm all good, mate. Fantastic. Um, I can't, unfortunately, I can't remember the caller's name, but you were asking a caller earlier about is it reasonable to expect that individuals could have voted for leaving the EU based on different principles, such as like having a Norwegian-style deal, yes. Britain style deal, etc.? Uh, I'm a Leave voter, 26. I'm on the younger side of the generation for this mm. uh, vote. But I think it's entirely reasonable for you to say that is what people... Well, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the blunt nature of the will of the people rhetoric that offends me, because I know people who voted to leave the European Union yeah. expecting that we would set up like Switzerland or Nor Norway because they weren't That's obsessed the with immigration. But anyone obsessed with immigration who was told by their cheerleaders that we could be like Norway or Switzerland was being lied to. Sure. But this is what I think the problem is. I think that for me personally, I think that the, the question itself on the actual ballot paper, should we leave the EU, I think that was a black and white question. I think that was very, well, for me at least anyway, I think that voting to leave the EU meant leaving the EU, and that included everything with the EU. However... But, but then anybody, you know that anybody who heard Owen Paterson say only a madman would leave the single market also voted well, in the same lobby that you did. But the issue, that I, th I think the issue is this, is that people, it's entirely right that people should have had the... Uh, reason to believe that, right, if I vote to leave the EU, there is a possibility, yeah. a keyword being possibility, that I could have a Norwegian-style deal or a Switzerland-style deal. However, there wasn't anything on the ballot paper that said, this is what you are going to vote for, leave, like, deal no, wise. And there wasn't anything on the ballot paper that said the opposite either, which is what they're now claiming. Right. Everybody so, voted knowingly to leave the customs union in the single market. We yeah. know that's not true. And I mean, look, there's always going to be things that, I, I, I fully appreciate the leave voter, there's going to be there's going to be loads of things that you can ask me questions of that, that, you know, makes me look like an idiot. And that, you know, for your remain voters would think, wow, we got you there. You're a Leave voter. You should have done that for this reason. But equally, I think there's many things that Leave voters could turn around to remain voters and say, well, actually, here's a reasonable reason why we should leave. And, you know, they would caveat the same, you know, caveat the same reason. Go on. Um, so, it, I mean, at the end of the day, I think with the moving on to the point with the House of Lords. Uh, no, I, I'm not I being funny, but you, you just you, uh, cause you did just say it would be really easy to make Remain voters look a bit silly by pointing out really good stuff about leaving. Right, well, well, for example, like democratically wise, I haven't been able to find a Remain voter yet that's been able to convince me why I should remain, or why I should remain the EU when I have no democratic no, but... vote on. The individuals that run it, he's Donald Tusk. Well, you don't, you don't have a democratic vote on the man who's leading. I mean, Ollie Robbins, the civil servant who's in charge of our negotiations, or anyone else in the civil service. Yeah, correct. But I think we've both like, con you know, both got each other there. That equally, well, no, we didn't, you mate. You, you said the EU's worse than us, process, and I pointed then. out that the process of democratic accountability is exactly the same. And if, uh, the, you know, the MEPs elect the commission, and you vote for the MEPs. But that's a bit of a blind alley, because you said it would be easy for you to make a Remainer look silly by pointing out good things about the EU. Well, I, 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 that was a good point, I, in terms of... I, I, so you're, but it's exactly the same as the relationship between Parliament, the government, and the civil service? 
correct that you haven't been there. Like, so you you put right. me there, but correctly, I you can't give me a good reason why I should remain in the EU. Why I can't vote because for, like, because we have free trade with the largest single market on the planet. Yep, that's one other point. I'm, giving, I'm asking you specifically with regards to Donald Tusk. Where is my democratic vote for Donald Tusk, for example? Well, where is your democratic vote for the head of the civil service? There we go. We're making, you're making my point perfectly. So you want to get rid of the civil service? You think we should have a referendum on that? No, I'm simply saying that there's things that you could ask me, such as the question you've just asked, that I won't be able to answer because it's a difficult question to answer. But yeah. equally, there's questions that I can ask you, such as the Donald Trump one, that you will not answer. You, no, will you, not you, 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 you find a party well. that's standing in the Europe. I mean, you can't now because you voted to leave, so it's a fairly pointless inquiry. But you find a party that's represented in the European elections and belongs to a bloc that would not want Donald Tusk to be in charge, and then you elect them, and, and night follows day. But that's not my... That's, I, I mean, I don't really agree with that point, but that's not me. Vote. Which that's bits don't you agree with? For that bit. Because you're saying that if I vote for... You're saying that if I vote for a party based on their manifesto, mm. um, of that they will do this and that, I think you and I both know that most parties don't fulfil most of their manifesto pledges. They do fulfil some, fair enough, but not all of them. So it's not... A well, only in the European today. Parliament or in Westminster as well? No, I think both. Right. You know, I voted, like, I voted Conservative in the last one, and I full well know that not every single thing that was in their manifesto... So is all, all, all of, all of the on. things that you've yeah. cited as reasons to leave the European Union, you've ended up saying that it's exactly the same in Britain. I guess the only difference is perhaps the nationality of the elected representatives as opposed to the nationality of MPs. Um... Jack, cheers, mate. I've got to crack on because after the break, I've, I've pre-recorded an interview with Jamie Oliver about his appearance later today at the House of Commons Select Committee and the uh, discussion and unveiling of the new cross-party obesity strategy. So we'll come back and go straight into that after this. You 